Hi, this is Shadi. Sambo is an incredibly rich martial art, not just technically, but also culturally. Martial arts are not just a set of techniques, but also the culture and the social phenomenon that goes into that martial art. For example, the Mongolians with their herding culture. Sambo is no different, yet Sambo has a reach of a very big geographical area and so you have many cultures pouring in and contributing turkic slavic and of course i'm not an expert on it but of course judo is the main uh, base for it and today we're gonna see a lot of good and interesting variations to techniques that we all know not saying they're completely absent in judo but yet I'm just saying that they're somewhat rare and the fact that they shot them it's very appreciated so the front belt grip in my opinion is very interesting here you see this tatoshi when someone is trying to get a very high grip on you and pull you in a front belt grip can be very good either to push and pull uh, careful not to push too long obviously you'll be penalized but to push and then to get that reaction and then pull them in for various techniques is a very great uh, trick that can be up your sleeve so or up their belt and uh, you see tsurigoshi is fishing the hips using the belt grip to get that unbalancing and it's not just from the back as you see here because uh, also the front here for example to keep someone at bay and then as they try to rush into you this is where you loosen your grip so they go in you turn and then load them onto the hips and then throw them so it's not just tai otoshi but it can also be tsurigoshi so uh now let's take a look at this round the back variation of tai otoshi we have countless variations like drop one arm etc but here where you duck under, grab the waist, and then with your hands, finish them. Next is Kawazugake. Now, the reason I'm gonna talk about this is because, of course, it is banned in Judo, so the evolution of this technique or the variations is clearly stopped. But what is interesting about Kawazugake is that it can take the shape of many other techniques, such as here. It can look like a sumigaishi, but with the entanglement it is like kawazugake you see the the various grips that we do today for sumigaishi this one is very famous but you have the leg entanglement and then you go down I understand why it can be dangerous because the entangled leg is pinned and so it can be rigid and when a huge weight can fall on it obviously you can expect an injury so here you see it takes the shape of an uranage but with the leg entanglement of kawazu gake here you see the classical form of it where you sacrifice yourself backwards and to the side the entanglement is the problem but um, nonetheless it is a very interesting throw you can do so many variations of this while taking the shape of another technique you can launch forward with an uchimata and kawazugake and then roll over you can just do so many things um, now let's take a look at jujitsu and judo's most classical throw tomoenage here is the classical variation where you dive deep underneath them and then catapult them forward not to the side uh, like we see the competitive variation of today but notice what he does is that he aims for the inner thigh rather than below the belt uh, this variation can actually give you a lot more lever or leverage and you can have a little bit more control because the waist and underneath the belt is such a random area can it can seem sometimes it can go on the stomach and you can get stuck but on the inside of the thigh it can be quite interesting especially when you're going to a side variation here you see mariyama uh, in the finals of the 2021 world championship brilliant again not saying it's absent in judo but here the fact that they documented it and placed a lot of emphasis on the detail again i 
I appreciate it quite a lot. Here you see. So next time, if you are a Tomoe Nage specialist, try to aim for the inside of the thigh rather than below the belt and let me know. Next is a front headlock Tawara Gaishi and here you see it's a sacrificing throw and what you do is you get your legs deep as they are bent over because it gives you that like uh, leverage and also uh, you don't have to do anything with your legs you just squat down lay down and then launch your hips but here this front headlock variation it it has a longer lever and uh, rather than the classical uh, around the lats we all know this variation a lot of people think it's a counter to morote gari only it doesn't have to be because um you can obviously grab one arm and the head careful with the spine i think one arm and one head uh, is i have to check the rules again but it can be a little bit stressful on the spine or the back of the neck i have to be sure but i'm not sure if it's legal so if anyone has an idea please let me know so here you see the classical variation but again this can be still very relevant today a lot of people get defensive in this manner and so you can grab the lats really hold them tight get your legs in one foot for slightly forward squat down and then go over rolling them uh, away so now this is a parenthesis i just want to talk about sukui nage for a second a scooping throw um, it's not just uh, this is not morotegari a lot of people think that when you lift up and scoop up it's morotegari you know morotegari is when you pull up pull and either rotate to the side or just uh, lift up no you don't lift up now finally why isn't anyone doing this in today's competitive judo? Why? Look at this. You have the full effect, no leg needed, and then a belt grip, sleeve. You have all the control now. You have the sleeve and the belt. You go in, you can scoop up, and then dump in any direction. Why isn't this kata guruma still or rediscovered, I should say, today you have all the best coaches you're traveling you're doing all this experimenting why isn't this being done you have a diagonal control with the sleeve and also the opposite side which is the belt and you have control of the extremity and the waist and then you can lift up position them because kata guruma is not about the leg a lot of people go down and just try to hug the leg no it's about deep up almost close to the crotch so you can have that control over the waist area the hips it's not necessarily the leg you can use it as a lever sure many variations but to lift up it's not actually the leg it's the waist and so this variation is golden i don't know why it's not being invested in so if you have anything to add let me know down below this was shady and as always thank you for listening